Hi everyone, and uh, when I say everyone, I don't have a clue how many people are joining us, so in some respects, hi anyone. Here we are uh, from the People's Church in Partington, although we're not in the building, uh, we're in the study at home, we're in isolation, but uh, thanks for being with us this morning. This is the first Sunday of us being church in a new way at this time, and we don't know how long we're going to be functioning like this, but we are doing all that we can to help people stay connected as part of church and to continue to be church for each other and also for the community that we are part of, that we are here to love and serve. We're going to be looking at a passage from the Bible shortly and exploring that a bit and thinking about how we might respond to that at this time, but I want to share a few uh, thoughts as we do that. The first thing to say is that these are difficult times. Everybody is affected by what's going on to some degree. And there's a number of people that we know who are being massively affected by what's going on through work, through cuts, through childcare, through uncertainty. It's a massive thing and we don't take that lightly. These are difficult times and they cause us to reflect on what we've built our foundations on and where we've found our security. These times can bring out the best of people and community and uh, delighted to have seen so much of that in Partington already. But actually these times can also bring out the worst in us and we've seen glimpses of that uh, in the news as well. Everything that so many of us have become uh, so familiar with that we've taken for granted as part of everyday life, uh, things are being stripped back. Patterns and rhythms are changing in employment, in health, education, economy, shopping, sports, the arts, it's all changing so quickly. And the same is true in the life of the church. Our regular rhythm of events have stopped and it gives us the opportunity to examine ourselves a bit and to reimagine how we be church at this time. We have the opportunity to ask, what does it mean to be the people of God at this moment? How are we to respond as the people of God at this point in history? Let's hold that question for a moment. We acknowledge the difficult times that we're living in but I believe the teaching of Jesus informs our answer. I'm reading from Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 22. It won't appear on the screen because I'm not that uh, technologically advanced, but uh, pick up your Bible and we'll read it together. So, Matthew 22, starting at verse 34. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So Jesus was asked this question, what's the greatest commandment? He was asked by the religious leaders of his time. And it was a time when Israel was living under the oppression of the Roman Empire. And that came uh, with a squeezing of your normal life, with heavy taxes, with never being able to be fully free because you were always under Rome. If you stepped out of line too far, uh, caused too much of a disturbance, it could well lead to a crucifixion. And in that context, Jesus said, the greatest commandment is love God with all that you are and love your neighbour as yourself. We are not under Roman occupation. I'm not suggesting that for one moment, but we are living in difficult, uncertain, challenging times. Uh, we're facing things we've never faced before. And the current climate and circumstances that are beyond our control could lead us to feeling the squeeze, to feeling the uncertainty that we're not fully free to live as we'd hoped or planned. There can be a gap between what we believe and understand of God, of what he's like, and our current experience. How are we to respond as followers of Jesus? We're to respond like this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul 
and all your mind, and love your neighbour as you love yourself. This is a good time to draw near to God, with everything being stripped back, with foundations being shaken, it causes us to ask what's the most important thing? And the most important thing is our relationship with God through Jesus Christ, because that informs everything else that we do. Times of crisis and uncertainty aren't the times to run from God, they're the times to run to God. If you're listening in, tuning in, and you're not a follower of Jesus, I would urge you to explore his life, his teaching, his death and resurrection, because it's life-changing, it's eternity-changing. Whatever's going on in life, in Jesus we see the full extent of God's love for us, self-giving, sacrificial, costly, to the point of death, but also overcoming and reigning and inviting us into relationship with God. In John's Gospel, Jesus said this, In the world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. And in 1 John 4 verse 19 we read, We love because he first loved us. Our love for God, with all that we are, is a response to his love for us, with all that he is. These are times to draw near to God, and as we do we'll find hope courage will find love and peace the peace that surpasses all understanding and grace for ourselves and for those around us as the church at this time let's draw near to god and love god with all that we are our heart our soul and our mind this is love god in how you respond emotionally with how you respond rationally, with your will, your purpose, your feelings and your understanding. Love God with all you are. Keep loving God. Draw near to the one who is with you as you walk through the darkest valley. Let's love God with our choices, with our time, our energy, with what we watch, with how we spend ourselves, with how we respond to the kids, with how we do our shopping and how we bless those around us. With everything stripped back, This is a great time to draw near to God in prayer, in reading the Bible, in sung worship, in stillness, in taking communion and remembering that you are in Christ. Draw near to God and love God with all you are. He has not left you. He will not forsake you. Make space in your diaries to be with God in a shaking world, in uncertain times. These are good times to come close to the faithful one to the sovereign one and to find yourself in him of course this isn't just an individualistic thing it's not just love god and that's it it's love your neighbor as yourself the church is the people of god it's not the person of god it's the people of god it's not just me and my thing it's all of us together loving god and loving our neighbors within the church and beyond the church uh, as well So loving our neighbours as the church, we can draw near to God together and even though we are dispersed and scattered and unable to meet physically at this time, we are going to create opportunities where we can still be church to each other. Shortly when this talk finishes, we're going to be getting together via Zoom and we're going to try worshipping together. Uh, We're going to take communion together. You may need to get hold of some bread and some wine or grape juice or, you know, something Uh, like that and we're going to pray and we're going to intercede together we might try having a brew together and that could be interesting it will be different but we're going to love god together and be the church community together even though we are scattered we don't stop being the church through the week and in the coming week there'll be more details coming up of opportunities where we can pray together where we can meet together using all the mod cons uh, for teaching testimonies and encouraging each other but beyond the church we are called to love our neighbors and our community we are here to be salt in the earth light in the darkness hope to the hopeless offering care and provision to those in need for such a time as this loving those around us should flow naturally out of our growing relationship with god god's love as we've said is sacrificial giving, generous and compassionate. So let's not put the blinkers on. 
Look out for those around you who need help, both practically and emotionally. Look out for those around you who need hope, who are isolated, who need to know that they are loved, that they are not forgotten, that they have a hope and a future. This is the time for the church to shine with the love of Jesus. I take no credit for this point that I'm going to share with you, but during two major academ- uh, epidemics during the Roman Empire, the church grew because Christians had a bigger story of hope. They took seriously the command to love one another and they welcomed others in. I pray that we might be that church that loves God with all we are, that loves each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, and that loves our neighbour and those around us with God's love. Now is the time. So let's start where we are, use what we have, and do what we can to love each other and love our neighbours as the church. Let's pray together. Lord God, I pray for us. Uh, that in the coming days and in the coming weeks that we would we would share your love with those around us that we would share your love with each other and that God we would be a voice of hope a voice of grace and compassion for our community and our communities at this time Lord fill us with your spirit uh, that we would uh, not be running on empty but that we would be running in your strength in your power in your wisdom that we could bless those around us and that we could love our neighbours at this time. So be with us, God. Help us as a church to stay rooted in you uh, and connected to each other and loving those around us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we close, I want to just read an excerpt from Psalm 62, which says this, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him. At all times, you people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Amen. We're going we're gonna to zoom over to Zoom at about 11 o'clock. We're going to worship together. We're going to break bread together. Have your bread and your wine or your grape juice uh, ready. And we're going to pray together. So thank you for being with us. Uh, we'll see you there at about 11 Uh, for the first 100 of us, which shouldn't be a problem, uh, should it. So thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.